Today, I'm going to start the first build of this cube. Uh, if you recall, based on this little section here from last video. So I've got all this aluminum cut. I have uh, a blade on my miter saw here that's made for aluminum. Uh, it's still pretty darn messy. So um, just be prepared for that. Glasses, earplugs, probably a, a mask as well. It creates a lot of aluminum dust. Um, at any rate, I've got the 80-20 here, all the pieces cut. I have my corner brackets, the panel mounts, the T-nuts with the half inch length bolts, T-nuts with the 3 8 inch length bolts, and some quarter 20 feet so that I have some nylon feet underneath this thing when it sits on the floor in the house. So with that, I'm going to start to preload everything. Um, it's going to be tedious, but it's going to be an important step to building this cube. To help me with the preload, I mean, first I'm going to uh, put a bunch of T-nuts and bolts together through all these different connector parts, but uh, I'm also going to use this kind of as a guide as to how many need to go where in which piece. Also, I forgot to mention the inside corner brackets as well. Those need to be on the front so I can get inset drawer faces and not have any of the mounting hardware in the way with these Blum drawer glides. So, now let's get that time lapse going. This is gonna be fun. So that took about 10 minutes. And as you can see, uh, I had to actually use my tool to help thread some of these on. They were pretty tight. And note that, uh, hopefully you can see this, that has the, uh, the little flange, I suppose, towards the inside. So towards the inside of the T-slot on the 8020. That's how you wanna put those on there. And that's just the corner brackets. Now I have to count how many panel brackets. I know I'm going to have four on that side, four on the back, four on this side, it's 12, four on the top, 16. So I have some extras, but now I need to do 16 of these. And uh, another thing to note, these, uh, the corner brackets are using the half inch bolts. The panel brackets are a little bit more thin, so they'll be using the 3 8 inch length quarter 20 bolts. And also, the Blum drawer glides here, they don't fit a quarter 20 bolt. I mean, it's so close. And uh, drill that out, it, like I said, it's just the tiniest bit. And then because of the depth and the thickness of the Blum drawer glide here, that's also the 3 8 inch length bolt. Uh, also, for example, um, on the bottom of the four corners, uh, this 8020 is not tapped, so, I'm gonna to need to tap that. And I've got uh, a video previously on how to tap 8020, so I'll link that in the description below so you can see how I've done that. Well, on to the next time lapse. Let's get this thing done. Okay, that was five minutes, so much faster. It makes, about, makes sense. It was half the number of T-nuts, just one for each of the panel brackets and 16 of these versus 20 of these. So next, I'm gonna move over to the four legs and I'm gonna tap what will be the bottom of them for quarter 20 threading. The legs, the feet I should say, have a one inch length on them, so I need to make sure I go at least one inch deep with this threading. Ta-da! 
tapping on it with your metal actually puts little marks on your 8020. So don't do that. Uh, tap it with something else. Maybe the back of this handle. And also another note, uh, if, you, if you know all your links in advance, precisely what you need, you can order from 8020 and include the tapping so that you're not doing this yourself. I think we're ready to start some assembly. Yeah. Are you? Let's see how it goes. Again, this is all, uh, let's call it loose fit because I'm not putting any Loctite on any of this. Uh, I want to put it all together and that's going to be enough for me to get my measurements for my drawer boxes and we'll move on to that probably next week. Yep. Let's get to it. As you can see, I'm almost done putting the cube together. Uh, the clamp and the scrap piece is nice to help you square this up. Uh, things to remember, preloading these T-nuts that have to be in here on both sides of each of these so that I have the attachment point for the Blum drawer glides. The panel mounts on the bottom, the panel mounts on the top for that's the side. Again, the panel mounts here. The panel mounts here for the top piece. Panel mounts here for the top piece. I have to connect all the top section now. Of course, I'm working from the bottom up. Uh, something else that's not done yet. I have to also put this piece up here so that I have the open area for the bottom drawer, open area for the top drawer so that both of those have inset drawer faces. So I'm going to tighten this down before I close up the top and I'll get back with you shortly. And so, 8020. The good thing is I don't have to recut any parts, but you got to know where your connectors are going to go. So this is an eight inch drawer, which means I need a nine inch opening. If I set this to nine inches, then this piece for attaching this Blum drawer glide is an inch too low. But if you can see that, I have my corner brackets on this side, the, the small side of the opening, versus down here on the big side of the opening. So I don't have room to move this piece an inch in that direction. That's the beauty of 8020 though. I'm gonna turn this up, slide a couple of these top pieces out of the way slide these out, well, I have to loosen them, slide them out, flip those corner brackets to the other side, slide them back in, and then I'll continue on. So, order, placement, all important factors when you're working with 8020. Okay, I just wanna show you just how easy this is now that I have it turned upright. I'm gonna slide this piece out, flip it over, and remember, I need to make sure I preload my T-nuts for the uh, drawer glide. I'm gonna feed those in. Get that T-nut in the slot. Come on. There we go. 
and now it can slide down into place and I can measure it. So I'll do the same thing to this other side and I'll be in good shape. As you can maybe see, I have constructed almost all of this except the last drawer glide from Blum. So I drilled out the third hole and the middle hole here in the back. And it, I mean, it was like a 64th too small for a quarter 20 um, thread. So that's why I had to drill that out. I wanted to show you what it was like to install this in here. Of course, I preloaded my T-nuts. I'm just gonna get them in a pretty close spot. A little bit awkward doing it for you so you can see it on the camera. And I'm going to line that up. That one's pretty darn close. See if I can do this and still keep you viewers able to see. So what I'm attempting to do is to catch that thread, and I did. Awesome. Temporarily make that snug. Okay, let's get this next one. All right, I caught the thread, nice. And I'm doing inset drawer faces with this project, so I'm gonna set this 5 eighths of an inch back from the front. Let's give them just a little bit of room here. It's another one of the beauties of 8020 is how flexible it is. If I if I were screwing that into wood, I would have to be absolutely right the first time. Tighten that down a little bit more. And real quick, what I meant by inset drawer faces. Some drawers are outside on the face like this when they close. These will be inset, so you'll be able to see the frame. Now if this was in my van, I would use some 80-20 with a smooth front here, uh, but this is just spare stuff I had laying around, so I don't care. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm doing a 5 8 inch inset drawer, drawer front. Uh, I'm going to be using some African mahogany, so we'll get to that. I'll do the drawer box, um, drawer box building and uh, actually have to learn how to square up a board that's not already squared uh, for that African mahogany. So until then, we'll see you on the next one.